Good morrow, lads and lasses. It is currently the morning of 3-17-2023, and I am here today to present to you CDs, parenthesis, and parenthesis, Switch Games, as opposed to CDs, parenthesis, are parenthesis, nuts. It's going to be a combination of my typical CD and Switch games. If you're curious why I'm doing ASMR voice right now, it's because currently everyone is sleeping and I want to get this done before there's a whole bunch of noise and I get distracted. So first on the list is actually not a Switch game, believe it or not. It is a Brook Wingman NS and it is my new replacement universal controller thingamajig for my fight stick as well as my other controllers. Uh, it works with every single one of my controllers except for, get this, my Stadia controller. Now believe it or not, if I was a time traveler, I would have went back in time and bought these, but how was I supposed to know they were going to end Stadia so soon? And then they were going to uh, include uh, a Bluetooth update to make it so you can play this with anything. But this is a solid ass controller. It is legit a solid, solid ass controller. It feels wonderful. So now that we have those prerequisites out of the way, let's get on to the first Switch game. Always Collection. This has Always Legacy and Always Awakening. Always Legacy is like a Super Nintendo style game. Uh, Always Awakening is an NES style game. Straight up used to be on the NES before it was ported to Switch. Um, there are Metroidvanias, which like I said in the last video, I'm not much of a Metroidvania guy, but this was going for dirt cheap, like 20 bucks. And I thought I might as well because it also had stickers and it also had both games included. Very nominal patch size. So overall, pretty happy with it. I typically get kind of confused in Metroidvanias. I got a little bit confused here. Oh, and the graphics are great. Um, but as always, graphics are great when it comes to these kind of games. And uh, the music's all right. And uh, just, you know, the town's called Awa, not the character. Spoiler, I know. The first CD is actually one that is pretty cool in my opinion. It's Frank by Amy Winehouse. Uh, Frank is the first studio album by Amy Winehouse. She was super young when she made this album. This came out in 2003. Put things in perspective, I was six years old. So I would not have been old enough to remember this. Amy was a... Uh, a freaking genius for her time when it comes to writing music. She was a wise soul, wise beyond her years. I love her aesthetic on this album. She's so mature and just so well put together in this album. It's, just, it's a shame what happened later in her life because this is when she's probably at her peak cognizance. You know, I wish she would have sobered up sooner, honestly. But yeah, there's some solid ass tracks in here. Know You Now is one of my favorites, although I, I have a special place for uh, pretty much every song in this album. It does have a bit of an anti piracy measure with the last track outro because they basically combine a bunch of b-sides and put it into like a stupidly long track that when you were to rip it you know it would basically be like something you'd probably want to cut up you wouldn't do as good of a job so basically that's kind of like an anti piracy measure in, in and of itself um yeah inside is solid pink when it comes to the cd itself and amy's right there looking pretty as ever you know she was a pretty young girl back in the day this is a solid ass record and I love it very much so. So let's move on to the next game. I'm bringing back a segment from my last recording, that being the surugaya.com spreadsheet segment, where I tell you what each game is worth and how much I paid for it. Uh, and I also tell you whether or not I think it's a good deal. And I'm gonna do an additional bonus because I did buy CDs from surugaya.com. I'll tell you everything I bought in a certain, certain bundle at the end and say how much it's worth once I've covered all the games in said bundle. This is part of the latest bundle I bought. This is THE Bass Fishing from the Simple Series, Volume 3 for Nintendo Switch by D3 Publisher, who is apparently owned by Bandai Namco. I had no idea. Uh, it's a solid ass fishing game. I have another fishing game for Switch. I'll put up on screen what it is. I don't, I don't know the name offhand. Got pretty far in that. Eventually, you know, maxed out everything, at least as far as I wanted to. And I'm moving on to this game. This game is pretty solid. Uh, it took me a little bit to get used to the controls, but I got used to them pretty quick. Curious about the price, it's $15.96 base price and $22.81 with shipping. I didn't have to pay an adjusted fee because I ordered it off of a PayPal credit, which doesn't add to your total because of uh, conversion fees, unlike Chase. So it ended up being $105.59 for the whole package, which this is probably one of the lesser deals, but when I tell you about the other deals that show up in this video. 
uh, you'll be you'll be amazed. You will be. It's freaking awesome. But yeah, this is probably the worst deal. But it's not even really a worst deal because it came new. As with all of the items in this particular bundle, I got new. We're gonna spice things up a little bit for this entry. We're going to be uh, recording another game segment. That being Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Reunion. Final Fantasy VII Reunion Crisis Core is a remake of a PSP game that I have played on my phone. I'm not going to say the whole piracy joke anymore, I'll just say it, I pirated it, you know. That joke has been buried to the ground, so I'm done with it. I played it on my phone through a PSP emulator. Pretty decent. This is plays just as well. Uh, you can skip cutscenes a lot more frequent, as well as uh, faster. Loading times are faster. I don't give a shit about the story. Gameplay is quite all right. Uh, I've gotten about as far in this right now as I have on the phone game that I played. Zack is pretty schmexy. The graphics are pretty good. The voice acting, I, I chose the Japanese dub. Me? Shut the fuck! Oh. No, thank you. I'd prefer to listen to the Japanese dub, which you can for, I don't know if it's the first time, but feels like the first time, feels like the very first time. Reluctantly crouched at the starting line, Cakes Fashion Nugget. This came out in 1996, a year before I was born. Uh, it has some killer tracks like The Distance and uh, I Will Survive, as well as... Frank Sinatra. I like the singer of Cake's voice. You can even call him a singer. I like his aesthetic. I like the trumpets. I like the guitars. I like drums. I like all of it. I think it's mixed perfectly fine. I like the album cover. I think that's kind of cool. I made sure to get a brand new seal just so I could get the explicit version. Because if I didn't get the explicit version, I was going to be a sad boy. Yeah, thankfully it was only like 12 bucks. It wasn't that much actually. So overall, not too displeased. And as you can see, it comes with a... Uh, a little swirly as uh, the, uh, the CD label. You can also see my recording software and the reflection. It is a really solid cake album. I don't know if it's the best cake album. I listen to all the cake albums, so I couldn't say. But certainly up there is one of the better ones, as well as the one that looks like a pig. I forget the name of that one, but that one's pretty good too. Next up is another uh, CD. It's Blaze Blue. Chrono Phantasma Blaze Blue Song Interlude 2 Soundtrack into the Blaze Special Features Disc. It's a soundtrack from a game that I bought as part of a 4 CD bundle. I specifically bought it for this, although I didn't end up using it because it's a DVD data disc. It's not even something you can play in your fucking car, which is really annoying. When I tried to rip it, it just gave me a bunch of WAV files, which is nice and all on the computer, but in the freaking car, that sucks. I don't like that. Uh, it comes with a uh, Blu-ray as well well, which I am never going to use. It also comes with a little bitty thing uh, that you can look around in. Here is the freaking featured disc. I got a killer deal regardless on all these CDs, so uh, it doesn't really matter too much. I mean, CDs are cheap enough as it is, so I paid like 15 bucks for four CDs, so, and they're all brand new, so how could I really complain? And plus the songs are great, you know, because Daisuke Ishibatari is, all, as always, fantastic. Anywho, um, that's enough of that we're moving on to another game in the collection it's eastward not eastbound and down it's eastward published by chucklefish made by uh pix pull and published by i am 8 bit at least when it comes to physicals it's it's a earthbound slash action rpg zelda basically it's an old style rpg and it's published by the same guys who helped popularize stardew valley before eric barone took over uh publishing duties himself it's quite the game i uh, it, it hasn't sold very well, so that's why I got it for so cheap. Barely anyone's talking about it, but I think it's pretty cool. I saw reviews mention about mention crashing happening. I played a little bit, haven't had any crashing so far. Uh, overall, I'm pretty satisfied with the package itself. Uh, I wish I had heard about this sooner. Uh, does it come with a uh, manual? No. But it does come with stickers, sticky, sticky stickers. The Always uh, Awakening slash Always Legacy Collection came with stickers as well. The Crisis Core package came with a DLC, which I didn't show, but that's no big deal because I already used it. The Bass Fishing didn't come with a manual either, so so far no manual squad hype. Eastward is uh, beautiful looking. The music is pretty minimal, not much to it. There's uh, nice accessibility options, which I like. Runs well on portable, no issues there. 
Uh, none of the games I own today uh, run bad. I, at least I don't think so. Again, Eastward might run bad if I play it longer. Who knows? But so far, everything works just fine. Hello, guys. Uh, I can talk normal now a little bit. I don't have to do as much ASMR going on around here. I should have mentioned, by the way, I didn't mention this in the beginning, but uh, we're, we're separating each uh, CD by artist as opposed to title, which is why the next set of CDs is uh, Blizzard CDs. Starting off with Starcraft Wing of Liberty. Here's what it looks like right here. And if we open it up, you can see the freaking uh, insert as well as the CD. And next up in our Blizzard Trio, which was also part of the four pack of uh, games I bought for $15.99 or $14.99, which was sealed. The next one being uh, Starcraft, part of the Swarm right here. And uh, this one includes a CD as always. But one thing that's interesting about uh, it is if you open up one of the flaps, comes with a little credits thing on the back. And the third one, composed by some of the same people, is the Diablo P soundtrack. Not three, P. It's a classic John Tron reference. And uh, this one also includes uh, a CD as well as uh, a little, uh, a little bitty insert right here, which uh, tells you the people who made the CD. And they, um, they're your typical uh, generic sort of soundtrack affair. They're not bad. They're decent to listen to on a car ride, you know, to kind of get the mood going. You know, there's there's some good tracks, especially on uh, I think um, one of the Starcraft ones. There's like a little country track that I really like. These were just kind of fillers, just to get the Blaze Blue soundtrack. But I end up liking these quite a bit as well. Quite the quality packages. They don't go for a whole lot, but who cares? I mean, I think I got a stellar deal on all the items anyway do I recommend picking these up uh, for I mean if you can get them for the price that I got them for absolutely considering they're basically just uh, soundtracks to Blizzard games which if you like Blizzard then you're gonna like that quite a bit there is one other Blizzard soundtrack from the Starcraft series that I do not own that one's a little bit more expensive but I don't really care probably will own it at some point maybe I won't I don't know just depends the next two games let's start with the first game the first game is Final Fantasy XII, The Zodiac Age. It is another Final Fantasy game, another Square Enix game, like my previous Square Enix game that I bought, Crisis Core. This one is not Japanese, it is the English version, which does come with the game fully included, thank god for that. I do like Final Fantasy XII, it's kind of like an MMO, gameplay wise. A little bit too much story for my liking, I wish there was more gameplay, which I know Final Fantasy and, and, and not wanting story, that's a bit insane. Graphics are beautiful, I think still hold up to this day. It's definitely a late PS2 game, you can tell. In general, the main character Vosh is useless. Uh, there's this old Bobbert Rob cartoon I used to watch about Final Fantasy 12 and it's completely true that the main character stats wise is useless and you probably rarely if ever use him in battle because he's so low stat and shit compared to everybody else. Now there's like a job system and of course like a dumbass I assigned all the wrong jobs to the wrong characters like there's a character with a bow I gave him like a gun characteristic character with a gun I gave him like a magic characteristic stuff like that I, I suck at this I'm not very good at it that's neither here nor there what can you do about it you know. Next up is is a Chinese game, Chickity China to Chinese Chicken, you know, uh, except for instead of chicken, it's uh, Skyloppers, or whatever the fuck they're called, Skywings, I don't know. It's the Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD. This also has the mysterious ghost label that the last game I featured from China had. It's Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. It's pretty linear. It has the similarities to Breath of the Wild that I didn't really realize before playing. I did rent it from the library before actually buying it, so I was able to continue my save. I was a little baby and got confused and what I was supposed to do, so I actually had to use Fee, which I know sounds insane. Um, I don't have the amiibos to be able to teleport whenever I want. That would have been nice, but unfortunately I don't got them. Maybe I'll get them in like a cheap sort of uh, like amiibo bootleg bundle, who knows. I do like the controls, they're not that bad, especially when you use the analog sticks, you get used to them. They're not too bad. Um, I'm afraid that if I use them too much on my portable, they might cause stick drift. Probably playing it more on the television. And I've gotten uh, into the first dungeon, I feel like, is, is where, where I'm at, so not too far. It's very homey, I think, as well. Next up is a uh, tribute to Azumanga Daioh, the animation. It's the Kurokorder Pops Orchestra's album. 
covering a lot of the great songs from Azu Manga Daio. This comes with the little insert weird thing that all Japanese CDs come with, that little like t tab thing, and it also comes with a beefy, uh, beefy little insert as well as a nice CD. It didn't come in the best condition, it was a little bit worn. This was, in fact, from Sugargaya. If I pull it up, I paid $9.41 base and $16.55 with shipping, and with adjustment, I paid $18.04, which is pretty decent. That's about how much you would pay for it, so it's not the best deal, but it's it's pretty pretty all right. And uh, I think that's the only uh, CD from that bundle. So if you're curious, uh, actually no, there's one more, so I'll save it, and and then I'll tell you the exact price because the Switch games I bought uh, from uh, this bundle on Super Gaia, the games I bought are games that I already showed him on video. That's Dragon Quest, Treasures, and Chocobo. Everybody, we'll get to that once we get to the next CD, but that won't be for a little bit. But Azumanga Daio. Going back to that, I love the soundtrack to Azumanga Daio. I love Kurokorda Pop Orchestra. I love uh, Orange and Lemons, or whatever they're called. Uh, they are a fantastic group, fantastic orchestra. I think the music in Azumanga Daio is underrated. It's some of the best anime music of all time. I think it's uh, a solid comedy. I love the uh, covers. They're great. They sound almost like live, except for they're obviously not because there's no crowd or whatever. Uh, yeah, they're pretty solid. I love, love, love Azumanga Daio. It's one of my favorite anime slash manga slash whatever. It, it's awesome. Next up are two Switch games. Uh, we have Little Witch Nobita, which was part of a Play Asia package. I'm gonna tell you the other ones in that package right now. We have Needy Girl Overdose, or as it's known in America, Needy Streamer Overload. And we have this, which is available on my eBay page at the time of recording, Signalis, a sealed Japanese copy. And I actually got this for free because it took so freaking long to come in. And uh, now my payment's all fucked on Playasia, so fuck you, Playasia, you stupid bitches. Uh, yeah, that's what you get for fucking using the wrong shipping service when you should be using something that takes faster. But we have Little Witch uh, Nobita. Should have motion controls, should say that up, up front. Uh, but it's your typical Souls-like affair. It graphically looks about the same. There's a lot more loading because it's a Switch game uh, and because it's a cartridge game. I pre-ordered this game alongside Signalus and Needy Streamer Overload or Needy Girl Overdose. I'll get to that. This didn't come with any sort of pre-order bonus, which is kind of disappointing. Uh, I was supposed to, but it didn't. I guess that's while supplies last. The game is uh, developed by Just Dan, published by Simon Creative slash Papuya Games. I'm assuming one of those people ported the the game over from PC. It was on Steam Early Access, had it on my wishlist for years. One thing is the game used to be super cheap, I don't know why I just didn't buy it when it was cheap, I don't know, I guess because I was lazy. I bought it on PC before I even received it. It's like little D-Gen, little lolly girl that goes on mystical, magical, Souls-like adventures. Because it's funny because I like Souls-likes more than actually like the Souls games themselves. I like games that emulate, emulate it but don't replicate the crappy controls and the uh, bad performance that From Software always does. I bought Elden Ring. I'm like, oh yeah, right, I don't like From Software Souls games. And that was a waste of money because I didn't end up not liking it. There is that, but I like this. Well, I'll probably play more of it on PC because that has the capability of using motion controls. Uh, next up is a three-part package, which is why I decided to do two Switch games in a row. It's uh, Need Streamer Overload or Need Girl Overdose, which I actually prefer the title Need Girl Overdose. Uh, especially considering the the engine itself is called Windows. I mean, I get that you're a streamer and you're not exactly just a girl, but I like it. Uh, I don't think the Need Streamer Overload is in, necessarily indicative of the game, whereas I feel like Needy Girl Overdose is. But I digress. Uh, it also came with an art book because I pre-ordered it. This is the art book right here. Uh, it comes with various art like this, like this, you know, or uh, like this. It also comes with a multiple track CD. It comes with all the game soundtrack included. It's not just a sampler, it's the straight up CD, although it's in the most bare bones basic bitch ass packaging you could ever have. Uh, it's it's very much kind of repetitious because a lot of the songs on the album are based off of tracks that progressively get worse and worse. This game talks about really dark subjects. It's, it talks about death, suicide, drugs, and you know, sex and all this stuff. It's not exactly your, your typical visual novel slash simulator slash whatever kind of game. The game is a sort of um, streaming simulator, but it's got a twist. In general, it's worth your while. I, I say 
pick it up. So there you go. Next up is two CDs. We have uh, first on the list, Outcast Stankonia. It realistically, it probably wouldn't be my favorite Outcast album. I, I I'm kind of leaning towards probably Speaker Box um, slash the other one. I forget the name of the Duel album. Um, yeah, I'm probably leaning towards that. But this one was the cheapest, and uh, I found it in a bundle with another uh, album that I'll show later on in this video. It does have some of the best uh, Outkast songs ever, like So Fresh, So Clean, and Miss Jackson. Those two songs are freaking awesome. Uh, yeah, there's there's a little bit too much fluffery. I mean, I will say this much, based on what I've heard, the first part of the album slaps a lot harder than the second half. The second half's kind of weak, honestly. People saying this is the best uh, Outkast album, I'm sure it is, but this particular particular version of the album, not so much. I think it's because they felt the need to justify the actual medium of CDs and, and how much they can hold, so they just kind of scram the album filled with stuff that they probably should have made a separate album with, or just put it in like a part one and part two. Because Jesus, this album seriously drags towards the end, and the songs aren't bad towards the end. They're just not as good, and they're not justified closers to the album, in my opinion. But I will say this much, the production is slick, the instrumentals and beats are pretty freaking good. I do like Andre 3000's rapping as always and singing and I also like uh, big boy isn't it big boy let me find out it is big boy b-i-g-b-o-i so as I was saying big boy has some of his best tracks on here next up is a game or not a game, sorry, a CD. It's Fooly Cooly, uh, original soundtrack, or FLCL, or Fooly Cooly. Yes, um, did you know that uh, freaking uh, Fooly Cooly came out in 2000? This is a 2000s product. It's just so funny because like, it feels so modern, you know? And disregarding those, those modern reboots, which kind of suck, the freaking anime still holds up. I mean, it is it is silly and it is kind of too on the nose, but the music, the music is the, easily the best part. You know, most of it's done by the pillows with the, with the composer here and there, but uh, it's really good. It's like solid uh, Japanese J-Rock. J-Rock Japanese, I know redundant, but it's, it's a solid ass indie album if you really think about it, regardless of the fact that it appeared in an anime. It has, I mean, Awesome Guy Dado has a great, uh, you know, s soundtrack, one of the best, you know, and this Fooly Cooly's up there with it alongside, you know, things like Cowboy Bebop. And I would say even Trigon. Well, that's, that's also kind of an unpopular pick. But uh, yeah, I think, I think this, this album is awesome. I bought it new. The funny thing is once I unsealed it, it like fell apart with, because it wasn't shipped very well, which is what, what, how most CDs are shipped nowadays. That's what I tend to find. In fact, I, I find the Super Gaia CDs, which is, this is not, believe it or not, this is actually from America. Uh, this is something that I, uh, that I purchased on eBay, but I was able to kind of strong arm the seller into giving me $7 off of the otherwise $14 purchase, which I'm pretty happy about. I had to take a, a, a skeleton of another uh, CD that I don't like. I call it CD Surgery, and basically I reassembled it, and it's just like new. I would use it in videos, but I'm afraid it would get claimed, because it's really good background music too, especially some of the instrumentals on this uh, album. But unfortunately, you know, that's how YouTube works. Whereas Naruto music, I could get away with it like in my last video, but uh, fully cool music is on streaming, so I'm, I'm afraid it will get claimed. Next up is uh, Rune Factory 5. Rune Factory 5 is the sequel to Rune Factory 4, which I do own. It's it's pretty cool. Uh, I'm not very far into it. These games you're gonna invest a lot of time in. I definitely invested more time in Rune Factory 4. I played a little bit because I, I played at the library. Uh, my local library, I uh, I rented that and played a decent chunk of it. And now that I own it, I can continue where I left off. And I was ultimately very confused where I was because, you know, these games, if you don't, if you take long breaks, I should say, it gets very confusing. This is published by Marvelous, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, this is one of the few manuals today. So Manual Squad. Frickin' a hype, baby. Let's go. Out of all the other games, I don't think there was any others with manuals. We're pretty manual barren today. Uh, yeah, unless I'm thinking of something else. I'm thinking that's one of the few games that does have a manual. I'm pretty sure. This game has the opposite problem of, of Rune Factory 4. Rune Factory 4, I didn't want to marry anybody because they all had shit personalities and shit looks. Whereas in Rune Factory 5, you have plenty of options. You're spoiled for choice. And if you go with a guy or a girl, it's pretty cool. And you can be gay in the game, which is pretty cool. I like that. So, uh, or really, you're just bisexual, really, because you can be whatever you want to be. It's not completely, you know, up to modern standards, but that, that's just Japanese development in general. 
The next CD is one that I actually did get on surugaya.com and we have a complete package. So let me tell you first what this cost and tell you what everything else was in, which this, if you're curious, it was the Azuman Godayo CD I showed earlier, the Chocobo Everybody and the Dragon Quest game. It went for 452 base, 1166 shipping and 1314 with adjustment. The base total was 92.79 for all four of those items. The adjusted total was 98.74 and the shipping was 28.56 when you combine everything together. Going on to the Naruto soundtrack, um, the opening of Naruto, the first season is garbage. It sounds like I'm on a jet by wings, which it's like almost plagiaristically similar combined with some other 80s songs. It's not very good. The ending is decent, but everything in between the actual soundtrack itself that, that plays during Naruto is pretty good. It's not exactly something I want to pop into a car because then I have to skip around a whole bunch because, you know, the first track and the last track are kind of skip worthy. I used it in my in my uh, video the last time. So this came in uh, all right condition, not the best condition. It's sort of, uh, it's kind of got a little bit of issues with the hinge. It's, it's kind of a low quality print when it comes to CD. It plays all right. I mean, I, I've not bought a CD that skips around just quite yet. I am, I've gotten pretty lucky in that regard so nostalgic. I, I remember watching the first season of Naruto as they were airing it on Toonami back when I was a kid. So this is my childhood really and that's the main reason why I bought it and because it was cheap. Next up is a game I already showed but it's in a different region this time. It's the American copy of Signalis, the game that I bought while waiting for my stupid Playasia order to arrive. Or I guess I just given up and I just said fuck it, it's never arriving and I bought it. Signalis is a great survival horror game. I like that it gives you multiple saves. You can't like save, screw yourself, you still technically could, but it seems nigh impossible to actually do it. Uh, there's some filters you can't turn on unless you are in dock mode. Uh, performance is basically no different really I think than PC. Uh, resolution obviously isn't the same. I think it plays well portably, although there is a brightness difference between portable and, and uh, on TV. I'd adjust the brightness way down for portable, but way up for my TV. So when I was playing it on my TV, it was like way dark, and I found out, oh, it's way dark because I, I had to readjust it because of the sunlight when I was playing on Switch. Now, I don't have an OLED or anything, it's just a base model Switch. Uh, this is a Humble uh, Games production. Uh, and it does come with something cool, it comes with a little lenticular thing where if you, if you flip it, it's not showing on camera, but when you flip it, it gives like a different image, uh, similar to the uh, thing that you get at the start of the game. This isn't much of a spoiler. I don't, I'm not going to spoil anything else about it. I mean, not like you really can, the game is pretty vague and doesn't really give a whole bunch of clear details in the plot anyway. Uh, is the game spoopy? Uh, stressful, not spoopy. But uh, I mean, it is kind of eerie, I guess. I have gotten decently far into it, uh, but have not beat it. For CDs, I make sure to listen to it all the way through before reviewing. That is a guarantee. By reviewing it, I have heard it all the way through. It's uh, freaking uh, The by Trico, and this is another part of Surugaya. I paid $460 for it for the base price and $1145 for it with the shipping. There was no fee. This is part of the bundle that did not include the fee because I ordered off PayPal credit. Came pretty much brand new it was it was not sealed but it, it looks like it had never been even fucking used it's like somebody just bought it unsealed it and then sold it like it, it is amazing so it is a box and you have to uh you have to unhinge the box it comes with the cd uh in, in a sleeve if you pop this open right here it has a little protective sleeve for the cd itself it also comes with uh with a uh, instruction booklet typical with a cd also comes with a poster, which I'll show you a little bit of that. Also it comes with uh, this little thing that you would normally include with all sorts of different CDs. I actually listened to the CD shortly before recording this. I made sure to get it all in so I could get it fresh in my memory. Uh, this is a math rock band. Uh, I do have one of the songs on my playlist, that being Potage or Potage, I'm gonna say it. By Trico, or they could be Tricot. I don't really know how to pronounce their name, but I'm assuming it's Trico. I've heard someone say Trico. It's an all-women math rock band uh, from Japan. It is a freaking fantastic listen. Uh, pretty much any of their albums are fantastic listens. I just went with this one because uh, it struck my fancy and it was the right price range for my bulk order. High quality mixing, high quality sound, high quality singing. Overall, fantastic package. I would definitely recommend it to somebody who is a fan of math rock 
um, and I would recommend it to somebody who's a fan of JND for sure. Like like me, I'm a big fan of both those things. Next up is a game. This just so happens to complete one of the bundles of from Siru Gaia. Uh, this is Tetris Effect from uh, Super Deluxe. Yeah, I happen to get another one. I think this is like a this is like an alternative limited run in Japan. I don't think it's the same company. Straight up, I think I think they just licensed this to some other limited company. Maybe maybe it is, and maybe I'm foolish. I don't know. But I paid uh, $29.39 for it and, and $36.24 with shipping. Which, by the way, this was brand new sealed, never been touched, in pristine condition, unlike the last Super Deluxe game I bought. So it is absolutely worth the money. I paid way less than what you would pay for it new. Here's the uh, back. It also includes a little pamphlet sort of thing that gives you little bonus details and whatnot. Also has a card just like Limited Run. Very similar indeed. And then there's Tetris Effect, uh, which is a fantastic game. It is Tetris, but with beautiful sound, beautiful visuals, immersive graphics. It's not the best music, but it's all right. But it fits the game pretty well. It's hard, it's it's hard. But that's just typical Tetris. That's typical Tetris is hard. But there is the advantage of being able to slow down and do like the, the multiple Tetrises. And uh, it is the new Tetris rules, which I like, I prefer. Um, it does come with a freaking manual, manual squad hype. The game is definitely the best Tetris game to ever be put out. Um, I'm not exactly a big fan of the Tetris company. They're kind of litigious and I don't like the fact that they don't really promote competition very well, just like how Nintendo doesn't promote Smash competition very well. So I want to end on a game. So I'm going to do two CDs and then one game. The first CD of this bundle is Weezer's Pinkerton. And uh, that was the other CD that I bought alongside Outkast's uh, Stankonia. Uh, Pinkerton was actually a really well-selling album, despite uh, what people might say. It just wasn't as much of a commercial success as the Blue Album. The, the studio responsible just had very high hopes for it. But it, it's not as negative as people say it is either. It is brooding, but it's not. There's some positive messages. There's some parts that I think maybe have an age as well. But uh, I think it's overall uh, a good Weezer album. I like Weezer. If I were to pick another album that I would have bought, it probably would have been the Red Album. I like that album quite a bit as well. The album's not bad either, and uh, I think the album after Pinkerton's pretty good too. I think it's the Green album, isn't it? I like several of their albums. They're, they're a pretty good group, but they're pretty mixed overall. They definitely have hits and misses. More misses as of late. But I have gone to detail how I thought about Weezer because I also mentioned my thoughts on Green Day, which kind of tied into Weezer, so I'll leave that for uh, that the, that video in question that I talked about it. This is the last Sewer Gaia purchase of the video. And this was part of uh, La Mulana 1 and 2, Pac-Man World, Shooting and the Wanderer, which were part of the last Switch video. And uh, this is the remaining thing that I bought from that bundle. It's Colt Pop Japan by Wieners with two ends. Yes, uh, shipping was $27.02. Total was, uh, base total was $103.51. The adjusted total was $109.55. For this CD in particular, I paid $212 base and I paid $888. Uh, with shipping and with shipping and adjustment because it was not a uh, PayPal credit purchase, it was a Chase purchase, it was 1039 uh, US dollars. And this is definitely worth the money I paid for it. It is a fantastic, albeit short, album by the band Wieners. Um, I do like their aesthetic, it's very rough, very raw, but it's also very polished at the same time. It's kind of a mix between the two, kind of a mid between that, but not in a bad way. Um, there is some English in the album, there's some Japanese in the album. Uh, the singing is fits the fits the mood of the song. It's not exactly the worst. And it's very fr frantic and hectic. And uh, it's definitely something that you should uh, listen to on streaming. Maybe not buy the CD like me. Uh, my favorite track is Go Anti Go. They do have on my playlist, our collective jam, that is. As well as Nippon Jams, which I, I will put somewhere in the video. Uh, whether it be on on top of the screen or in the end credit. Finally, we have the last game, and I kind of just spoiled it. The Toho game. It's Toho Genso Wanderer Lotus Labyrinth R, which I think I got exactly right, but I'm going to put it on the screen if I did or not, because I don't exactly know. This is a Mystery Dungeon game. I know, surprising, right, given how many Mystery Dungeon games were in the last video? It's not an official Mystery Dungeon game, but it is basically a Mystery Dungeon game. In uh, gameplay, 
It's a Toho fan game. I love Toho fan games. I literally just bought one for the Steam Summer Sale, or not Steam Summer Sale, Steam Spring Sale that's going on right now as a recording. Um, Toho is, you know, honestly one of my favorite franchises. Not necessarily for the story. God knows I don't give a shit about that. Music's fantastic. And as well, uh, there's a lot of creativity in the games that are, that are put out from fans and from Zen himself. I love shoot 'em ups. I love, you know, other genres of games that Toho occupies. Um, I mean, it's just something I just happen to fall into, and I do love a lot. Uh, this is a Japanese copy, um, and I will say this much, I want to shout out somebody that I might put in the description. Uh, he's an eBay seller, his name's Mad Hatter, or I think it's a girl, I don't know if it's a guy or a girl. That's Mad Hatter HK. This is a Hong Kong based seller uh, that actually has pretty solid deals on Japanese imports as well as Hong Kong imports, and sometimes even Western games. And uh, where I live, uh, this seller takes like literally within seven days of purchasing to arrive. It's, it's actually quite amazing how little time it takes. And uh, I've had a good experience both time I've used uh, this seller in particular. And I have to say, uh, check them out. They're great. In this game, I was able to make an offer on and I got for a pretty decent price. As well as the Le uh, Legend of Zelda Coward Sword HD. That's another game I bought. Anywho, uh, that is the end of the video. I never really know how to end these videos. Uh, but hey, have you noticed that I'm putting out a lot more videos as of recent? Isn't that crazy? Considering, you know, like ever since 2020, like I've been uploading pretty frequently, but there was like that massive gap between like 2016 or 17 in between 2020. I think it was actually four years. I think it was. 2016 to 2020, I didn't upload anything, but now I'm back and I've been doing stuff uh, during that time for like about three years now, and that's uh, pretty dope. So, peace.